morning. Welcome to Ryland Chapel Online Church. You are so welcome and thank you for joining us today as we come and worship God together. If it's your first time with us, we pray and hope that you will be encouraged and blessed and have a real sense of God's presence. And whether you've joined us every week since we've started these services, my prayer is that you will also just know the presence and the peace of God. God's word says that he is our all sufficient one. And so I pray that today as we worship and draw near to him, that he will prove himself to be our all sufficient one. I'd like to read to you from Psalm 150. This is what it says. A psalm of praise. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to the abundance of his greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with harp and lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with stringed instrument and flute. Praise him with the sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud cymbals. Let everything, let everything that has breath and every breath of life praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just in case you missed the message of that psalm. The psalm is encouraging us to praise the Lord. Let's praise God today. Let's praise him for his faithfulness. Praise God for his um, love towards us. Let everything that has breath, the life of God within us, let everything that has breath praise the Lord God of heaven. And as we praise God, um, we choose which way we want to do that. And here, it speaks of with a harp, with a lyre, with a trumpet, with a tambourine, with dancing, with string instruments, with flute, with the sounding cymbals. Um, but also praise him um, for his mighty acts. Praise him for his greatness. Praise him for, for he is a God who is mighty in heaven. And so we're saying praise God for who he is. But praise God with, what, with whatever you have. Whatever you have, praise God. So I pray that today we will praise God for his love and his faithfulness and his mercy towards us. As we come today is our Motto Verse Sunday. And so today we have a visiting speaker. Um, so we welcome a Baptist minister, um, Reverend Fred, who will be joining us today and bringing God's word. Welcome to you, Fred. We pray that as you open God's word, that it will be a blessing to us and that we will have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us. Thank you as ever to our faithful Thea who um, has put this service together by editing um, the, the sections together. Thank you Thea and um, as you worship, we worship God with you. So let's pray as we come and worship the God of heaven. Let's pray as we come to praise him for who he is and what he has done. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for this glorious weather that we're experiencing. And may we just look around creation and praise your holy name. Praise you for who you are and praise you with all that we have. Let every one of us that has breath today praise the Lord. Accept our worship and our praise in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. I'll see you at the end of the service.
Let us hear the word of the Lord, David's Psalm of Thanks, taken from 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 8 to 14, and verse 36, and also verses 23 to 36. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Israel, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He is the Lord, our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Then all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations his marvelous deeds among all people. For great, for great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens, splendor and the majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. The world is firmly established, it cannot be moved. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad. Let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Then the trees of the forest will sing. They will sing for joy before the Lord for he comes to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Cry out, save us, O God, our Savior. Gather us and deliver us from the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name, that we may glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord, our God, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Then all the people said, Amen and praise the Lord. Here hence the reading of God's holy word. May he had a blessing to it.
Psalm 32, verse 8, it's true. Turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in his wonderful face And the things of earth will grow strangely dim In the light of his glory and grace as we get ready for the word cast off all the cares let the Lord bless you with his word today turn your eyes your spiritual eyes on Jesus Look for this wonderful face And the things of earth Will grow strangely dim In the light of his glory and grace In the light of his glory and grace in the light and the glory of his face. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the opportunity of giving us to come before your presence. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you that you are faithful. And as we come before you now, we ask that you will teach us. We ask all this of God in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to bring a message titled, How God Leads Us. The test we have is Psalm 32, verse number eight. I read, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. I looked it up in the dictionary and this is what it says, instruct. He says, to furnish with knowledge, teach, train, or to educate. To teach says to impart knowledge, to give instruction in something. And then counsel says to give advice. So when I looked at it closely, Instruct and teach says almost a similar thing or the same thing, apart from counsel, which is to give advice. I want us to unpack this a little bit. It's God himself speak, speaking through the psalmist David said that he himself wants to instruct us. He wants to teach us and he wants to counsel us and to watch over us. How does he do all this? 
One of the ways God teaches us or instructs us is through our senses. That's if we are sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, he will lead us in our thoughts and our desires. In Philippians chapter 2, verse number 13, it says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good promise. So when we pray, all we are doing is aligning ourselves to the promises of God. God has already done it. It's for us to align our thoughts, our visions, and actions, and our desires to what God has already done. He teaches us through our will and our actions. I hope you're following. That's one of the primary ways that God says he wants to teach and instruct us. He can also do so through the experience of our lives. Experience, they say, is a good teacher. Have you heard the passage that says that um, affliction will not arise a second time? Why? Because if we have been through something in the past, especially if it's painful, we don't want to go through that again. Experience will teach us that that is not the right way to go. That is not the right thing to do. That's not what we should concentrate on. And then it's the experience can come through our fathers, our mothers, our parents. It can also come through our teachers, through our formal education or informal education. Our friends, our colleagues at work, life generally can teach us what well, some say the university of life can teach you how to go. God can teach and instruct us through his leading. Have you been in a situation where you're convinced in your spirit or what we call eureka moments? When it dawns on you that the right, the, the part you're taking is the right part. Or maybe it dawns on you that that's not the way to go. God speaking through your spirit to say, this is not the way that we should go. Or sometimes it makes things clear. The thing you struggled to understand before, and all of a sudden, it becomes very clear because of the leading of God. He can instruct and also teach us through other people. And that's why he places us in a church like this. He places us in a group so that people can speak into our lives. People can speak into your situation. Have you been in a discussion where all of a sudden something is said concerning what you are going through at that moment and you know that God is using people to speak through to you? Or a minister is preaching and all of a sudden it feels like you are the only audience. All the words are directed towards you. It's not that the person knows about you or your situation, but what he is being led to speak at that moment is exactly what you're going through. Maybe you don't want to come to church that day. And God is speaking through them, that person in order to bring the relief or light in that situation or that challenge you're going through. And as Baptists, that's why God 
has placed us in where we are. You have the elders, you have the deacons, and everyone around us are instruments in the hands of God in order to reach us. Well, we are not. And all he does that is to the witness of his word in our hearts through his peace. You are about to do something and you have that peace that surpasses all understanding. That peace that is God in your heart and you feel it is right. For he will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Peace like a river. Anything may be breaking loose where you are at. But there is that calmness that God gives you. That this challenge or what you're going through or this illness is to the glory of God. That God will glorify himself by healing you. You hear a particular word so that's not for me because I know my Redeemer lives it and that he will take care of that which I have given over to him. That's some of the ways that he teaches us. And he says, I will counsel you. What's counsel? Counsel is advice. In legal terms, Listen, I'm going to my lawyer, I'm going to my counsel. Why? Because the lawyer is someone trained in the area of law who can give you insight to the position that you are in and who can explain things to you and who can guide you to make the right call or to make the right decision in whatever you're going through. So God's counsel in other ways for us is that he wants to guard our thoughts and our intentions. He will guard our thoughts and our intentions. How does he do this? Let me borrow on Psalm 119, 105. It says, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. He guides us through his word. Lamp for my feet means that we can see our immediate environment. We can see our immediate situation. That God will bring clarity. He will bring a deep understanding on how to go about the things that we are going through. That challenge, that problem, that thing that seems to be hard. He will guide you step by step as you deal with that. Then he says, light on my part. What he does is that he guides us so that we can see further afar. And not just the short term, not just what's going on now. So that we do not walk in the dark. We can learn from his words or scriptures on how to live, how to deal with that situation. He can guide us to follow Jesus' full step as we trust in him. And in times when you have doubt, he can show you or counsel you through his word. What happens is that his spirit quickens your mind to a specific scripture to deal with the matter or issue at hand. Another way he counsels us again is through other people. And as Baptists, we are a priesthood of, of believers. And he can use the minister, he can use the elders, he can use the deacons, he can use church members to speak to us as a way of counseling us. 
all this boils down to knowing the word of God. As Paul said to Timothy, as you study to show himself approved, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of God, rightly using the word at crucial times in our lives. And it's only when you know the word, when you know the Bible, when you know the scriptures, that you can apply it to your situation. That's how God guides us, counsels us. It is the word that the Holy Spirit will use to bring you to remembrance in terms of your need. And then he says, he will watch over us. What does that mean? That he'll be there for you. He'll be there for us. He will never leave us, nor forsake us. He will watch over us. Nothing shall be able to snatch us out of his hands. Nothing at all. Because he is watching over us. He has placed us in the palm of his hand. As I bring this short message to a close, I want to encourage you to depend on what he says. In other words, depend on his word. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. In other words, rely on his scriptures. Do not rely on your own self-effort or other people too much because they may fail us. They may fail you. But you need to know his word because he never fails. If we're going to have victory or if we're going to be conquerors in whatever challenge or issue we're going through, you must depend on his word because they have never fed one job. There are a few things in life that are trustworthy. Possessions fail. Even pleasures fade away. Popularity or celebrity culture also falters. Here today, gone tomorrow. But the word of God endures forever. Trust his word. Study his word. Apply his word. These are the ways he instructs us, teaches us, counsels us, and watches over us. Let us pray. And Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that you bring it to our remembrance when we need it. And we ask that you be with us in whatever situation we find ourselves now. We trust in you to continue to guide and lead us and to bless our lives. For we ask all this now in Jesus' name. Amen.
we have come to the end of our service. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I pray that you had a real sense of the presence of God as we've sung together, as we've opened God's word together, and as we've sat and listened to God's word um, speak to us. So thank you, Fred, for bringing God's word and um, being willing for God to use you as an instrument to speak to us and encourage us. Thank you to Thea and all the others who are involved in the service today. It's lovely to um, have others involved in the service. Um, let's have more of that, hey? Um, so Thea, thank you for your hard work. Let's not forget um, as we go into the week that on Thursday we have prayer meeting at eight o'clock. And so um, if you are Zoom savvy, um, please do join us at eight o'clock if you're free and if you are able. Let's also just keep each other in mind and in the prayer um, for those that suffer silently um, and for those who are in hospital at the moment, um, just for us to reach out to each other. Um, I think I'm very mindful there's a lot of kindness and generosity that does go on between us, which others don't know about. And to be fair, they don't need to know about. And so let's just encourage each other to continue to do good um, and to be disciples of Jesus. Let me pray for us um, and then let's say the grace together and for each other. Remembering that God's not hindered by geographical distance. He's not hindered by brick walls. As we say the blessing, that we bless each other wherever we are. Um, the other side of London, you know, the other side of the world, we're blessing each other. So let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the worship. May we, on account of spending time, grow deeper in our faith and in our love for you. As we go into this week, may we go confidently, knowing that you, the God of heaven, go with us. Let's say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Have a great work week, church. Have a great week and um, enjoy the weather if it stays with us. But whatever the weather, um, have a great week knowing that God goes with us. Bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs>